Thank you. Uh, as the ranking member on the Capital Markets and Government Sponsored Enterprise Special Financial Services Subcommittee, I'm very pleased to welcome all of you to the third in a series of nonpartisan panel briefings I've organized to discuss emerging issues in financial regulation. I also want to thank and acknowledge uh, some of my colleagues that are here. Uh, they've joined us today. Brad Miller, Congressman, have been here. Uh, I think at all of our panels. And today we have Dale Green, who's with us, both serving on the Financial Services Committee. While previous panels have focused on certain aspects of the Dodd-Frank Act, I wanted to focus today's discussion on the ongoing housing crisis and whether the use of eminent domain to seize underwater mortgages is a feasible alternative to assist struggling homeowners. In the previous Congress, I served as chairwoman on the Financial Services Subcommittee on Housing and Community Opportunity. And it was through that subcommittee that I convened countless hearings and roundtable discussions, all in efforts to understand the scope of the housing crisis and its economic impact on communities across the country. I've worked on legislation in Congress and advised the Obama administration in developing targeted strategies to assist homeowners. Legislatively, I was able to pass an expansion of the Neighborhood Stabilization Program, a grant program for states and local governments to buy and revitalize abandoned and foreclosed properties. And the administration also included within its market settlement recommendations I've long advocated for to improve servicing standards. However, despite these efforts and the administration's housing programs, four coaches persist and we must continue our work to refine inadequate programs and build on the success of those strategies that have shown some level of success. Given that opportunities for a national broad-based principal reduction program appear to be strong, and the acting director of the Federal Housing Finance Agency, Edward DeMarco, has made clear his universal rejection of principal reduction as a federal strategy to recover the housing market, local jurisdictions such as San Bernardino, California, and Chicago, Illinois, are exploring alternatives that would allow them to seize and restructure underwater mortgages for the purpose of keeping families in their homes. While many observers see this development as the clear result of inadequate federal action, opponents of the plan cite legal and constitutional concerns with the proposal. <coughs> Industry opponents have further indicated that if jurisdictions do adopt similar plans, that the impact on housing finance and living will be harmful to consumers. As the lead co-author with Representative Simpson <coughs> On H.R. 1433, the Private Property Rights Protection Act that passed the House of Bipartisan Support earlier this year. Now, I confirm in my opposition to the Supreme Court's Kelso decision, which I believe lowered the standard for public use government takings. In June 2005, the Supreme Court issued a 5-4 decision in Kelso Kello, uh, versus the City of New London in which it held that economic development can be in public use under the Fifth Amendment's takings clause, justifying the government's taking of private property. Following the decision, many charged that uh, <coughs> Kelo, is it Kelo? Kelo. It's Kelo. They government's a black check to redistribute land from the poor and middle class to the wealthy. In my experience, few policies have done more to dismantle communities than eminent domain. However, where I have typically opposed eminent domain for its impacts on lawful homeowners, I'm intrigued by the proposals today because their main objective is to reduce principal so that people can stay in their homes. However, these proposals do raise a lot of questions and concerns that I anticipate our panel uh, will address today. While I've not endorsed eminent domain's use for principal reduction, I believe today's forum will afford us all an opportunity to understand how such a proposal could work. The legal questions surrounding this issue and who would be impacted. Today's discussion is especially relevant since just last week, FHFA concluded 
its comment period for input concerning the use of eminent domain for underwater mortgage refinancing. And considering the wide range of debate and opinions on the proposal, I know our panel of experts will have a lot to discuss. Prior to debate, today's discussion, I did attend San Bernardino's public meeting on the eminent domain proposal, and I do hope that our audience today will be just as engaged and ask our panel of experts substantive questions. Once again, my main objective in organizing this panel series was to create a forum where experts and industry insiders with opposing viewpoints could discuss financial services in an interactive setting that may not always be achieved in congressional hearings. In short, we want you to argue. <laughs> uh, today's panel discussion is not intended to advance one particular point of view, but it is intended to provide members and staff with educational enrichment opportunities on an ongoing basis. I look forward to today's discussion, and I do thank each of you for your participation and your attendance. And now I'm very pleased to introduce our moderator for today's panel. His name is Eric Shaxford. Eric Shaxford is an anchor and editor at large at Bloomberg Television, where he hosts Market Makers. Shaxford provides insight on the companies and stories moving the markets and brings interviews with top names in finance. With nearly two decades of experience as a financial journalist in the United States, Canada, New York, South America, and the Middle East, Shaxford regularly speaks with Wall Street's most powerful executives and the top money managers from around the world. Would you please join me in welcoming Mr. Eric Chapman? Thank you very much, Representative Waters. It's a delight and an honor to be here. Members of the audience, good to see you. Members of the panel, I look forward to a spirited discussion. Uh, perhaps uh, it's no accident that the carpet is red. Um, all right, where do we begin? I, I guess I just wanted to cover a couple of things, if I may, before we, we do start. Uh, just in the interest of courtesy, perhaps keep uh, cell phone usage to a minimum. I think we'd all appreciate not hearing texts and cell phone ringers for them on vibrate if you must. I'm not sure what the rules are down here, but I think it's generally a good one for panel discussions. Um, for the panelists, I'm going to pose the questions. I'm going to try to direct questions to an individual after that. It's open for discussion until, judging by the clock, I decide that we need to move on and we'll cover some more ground. It's going to be a discussion in four parts. This is important. Uh, we'll briefly address the question why we're here. Then we'll talk about the practicality of using eminent domain as a tactic for principal reduction. Then we'll talk about the legality. And then we'll talk about the morality. If we can, let's try to keep those as distinct as possible. I know it's not going to be easy, especially uh, in the heat of a spirited argument, but it would help, I think, the members of the audience to be able to digest um, the subject matter uh, better, let's put it that way. Uh, so I'm just going to say a couple of quick things um, about why we're here. Too many mortgages are underwater, we know that. Too many are delinquent or in default, there's too many foreclosures, and there are too few reasons for borrowers who are paying down their loans to keep doing so. Um, as one of the chief backers of this eminent domain proposal has said, quote, there haven't been many good solutions to this in six years. And uh, I challenge anybody here uh, to dispute that comment. But I would like to ask the panelists, and this is an open question, what should we add to that? Shall we add some facts and figures to help people appreciate the gravity of the situation to the degree that they're not already familiar? I might uh, open it to whoever wants to start. Uh, 